In this video, we'll learn how to add and subtract fractions. And one of the ways we can visualize this is by using a pie that's been split up into different pieces. So here I have um, some pies, and you can see that the pie has been divided up into one, two, three, four, five different pieces. So each one of these little slices of the pie here would represent one fifth. So I could shade this in here, and that little piece there would represent the fraction one fifth. And if I took this second pie here and filled in two of them, well, that would represent the fraction two fifths, because two out of five pieces of that pie have, have been shaded in. And now what would I get if I were to add these together? Well, if I have one out of the five shaded and I add two out of the five shaded, then I must have a total of three out of the five shaded. So one fifth plus two fifths would equal three fifths. Now notice that when you're looking at these fractions here, one fifth plus two fifths equals three fifths. It does mean that we would add the numerators, we call the top numbers here the numerators together to get three, so one plus two equals three. But notice how we didn't say that one fifth plus two fifths equals three tenths. No, that's wrong. These are not tenths, these are fifths. And if we have one fifth and we add two fifths, we have three fifths. We're still talking fifths of a pie. So it's really important that when we're adding or when we're subtracting fractions that we never change these denominators. We never add or we never subtract these denominators. One fifth plus two fifths equals three fifths. Let's look at another example. So in this example here, in this first pie, again these are fifths of a pie, each one is, each pie has been divided up into five pieces. We can see that I have shaded here four fifths of a pie. So one, two, three, four, four out of the five have been shaded. And this time I'm going to subtract, I want to take away, subtract, uh, and I've shaded two of them here, so subtract two fifths. So if I took these four pieces here and I subtract or I've removed two of them, then what would be left? Well, we would have this piece still, and we would have this piece still. So four-fifths take away two-fifths equals two-fifths. And again, you can see here that if I went four minus two, I end up with my answer two over here, and my denominators, which were five, remain the same. And of course, you could see this would make no sense. Four fifths take away two fifths. If we subtracted the numerators and got two, we would subtract the denominator and get zero. Five minus five is zero. Makes absolutely no sense. So remember, whenever we add or subtract fractions, we do not add or subtract the denominators ever. Only add or subtract your numerators. Well, so far in these two examples, we looked at, at ones where the denominators were the same. But what if these denominators were different? So here in, <clears throat> in this example, here I have a pie, and you can clearly see that I've shaded half of it. So one out of two, this pie has been divided into two pieces. I've got one out of two. So that would represent the fraction one half, plus we'll add these together. And here is the fraction one fourth, because I have shaded one out of the four pieces of the pie. And you could clearly see here that our answer is going to be more than a half, because we already start with a half, and we're going to add some more parts to this, one out, of, one out of four. So you can see that if we just said, oh, let's just add these, one plus one, that's two. Oh, and let's just add these denominators, two plus four is six. Well, two out of six is less than a half, because three sixths would be a half. So you can see we never, never, never add the denominators. But 
before we can add the numerators, we, we have to have these same denominators down here. We can't compare halves with a quarters. So you could see in my diagram here, this first one, what I could do, and I'll do this in red here, what I could do is I could take this pi and split it up so that it looks exactly the same as this one. So now instead of this actually looking like one out of two, I, because I've converted it now into four pieces, you can see that one half is actually the same thing as two fourths. One half, two out of four, same thing. So what we will do first is we will say, okay, one half we'll say is the same thing as two fourths, and now this is one fourth, so when we add these together, we would get these two shaded, that was from our original one half, or two out of the four, plus another one here, another quarter. So you can see we would get three quarters shaded. So again, once we have the denominators the same, then we can add the numerators together, three fourths. So here's the this, here's this situation. If the denominators are different, you have to first of all make sure that they have the same denominators. We've got to be comparing the same number of sections to our pi. We can't look at a halves and a quarters. We can't look at one fifth and a half. We've got to make sure that those denominators are the same. Let's look at another example. So here I have uh, two fractions, two fifths plus a half. And um, my first step was to make sure that I'm comparing the same things. So in this case, I'm not. These are fifths, these are halves. Before we go anywhere, we got to make sure that the denominators are the same. Often we say we want a common denominator. Well, instead of doing this with um, pies, let's see if we can look at what we could do to make these denominators the same. Um, so fifths and halves, what we could do is we can, can we think of a number that we can divide both of those numbers into. And um, the number we can come up with after a little bit of thinking would be tenths. And so if I've got two out of five, well that would be the same thing as having four out of ten. Because if I multiply that by two, I get four. And if I multiply that by two, I get ten. So if I, imagine if you had a pi here. Let's just do one really quick. So one, two, three, four fifths, I had two out of fifths, two fifths. That would be the same as splitting each of these up in half. Now I would have ten of them, and of those ten, one, two, three, four would be shaded. So two fifths is the same fraction as four tenths. And the two down here, you see I can also make ten by multiplying everything by five. So one out of two is the same fraction as 5 out of 10. And so 10, now when you look at these two fractions, 10 is the common denominator. And so 4 tenths plus 5 tenths, now I can just add my numerators together, 9 tenths. So 4 tenths plus 5 tenths equals 9 tenths. Again, remember, we do not add the denominators together. We're talking about tenths of a pi. And if we added them together, we'd have twentieths of a pi, which makes no sense. Well, now, what happens if we have some mixed fractions like this that we have to add together? So here I have one and a half plus two and two thirds. Now, what we want to do when we have some mixed fractions and we're adding or subtracting is we would like to convert these to improper form. And so you remember how we can do that. Let's, let's look at this fraction one and a half. It would look like a whole one and a half one. So this is just the fraction one and a half. We'll look at two and two thirds later. So one would be one whole thing, so entirely shaded. So we have an entire pi here and half of the other one. So this little diagram here would represent the fraction one, one whole and a half of the other one. Well, you could see, if we looked at it in terms of how many halves do we have, I have one half, 
two halves and three halves. So the fraction one and a half is the equivalent to three out of two. I got three, three halves. Three halves would make one whole and a half of the other pi. So three halves. And then if we look now at two and two thirds, that would be, so let's make some thirds here. So this one is entirely filled in because there's a hole. Here's another hole. And then two of the three over here. So here's, let's see how many thirds we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thirds. So two and two thirds is equivalent to eight thirds. Now you, you maybe learned already the little shortcut way for converting mixed fractions to improper form. So we call these a mixed fraction. Mixed because they have some whole numbers and some fractions. And these we call improper form. But in spite of what the name Im implies, improper form, we actually use these more often in higher level mathematics than we would use mixed fractions. So it's okay to be comf comfortable in working and leaving your answers in improper form. Anyways, so one and a half, there is a shortcut way of converting mixed fractions to improper form without having to do these diagrams all the time. And the little shortcut method is if you take the denominator and you multiply it by the whole number here and then add the numerator, you can see 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 over 2. And the fraction 2 and 2 thirds, so if we go 3 times 2, that's 6. 6 plus 2 is 8, we get 8 thirds. So the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator is a shortcut method of converting it to improper form. Otherwise, you can think of the of this like two. We've got two and two thirds, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six thirds plus two more thirds makes a total of eight thirds. So carrying on with our question here then, so one and a half plus two and two thirds, I've converted them to improper form. Now what I've got to do is look at my denominators. They're not the same. These are converting halves. These are, these are halves. These are thirds. So I've got to figure out what denominator, what, what number can I divide these both by so that I can get them uh, common, get a common denominator. A little bit of thinking, you, you'll be able to see that 6 is a number that you can divide by 2 and 3. So in order to get 2 to a 6, I would have to multiply that by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So if I had 3 out of 2, 3 times 3 is 9, that would mean I would have 9 out of 6, 9, 6. So now I've got a, uh, I've converted my 3 over 2 into 9 over 6. In my second fraction, we had thirds. I've got to multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. So multiply this by 2. I get 16. Now, because I have common denominators, it's time to add my fractions. If I have 9 plus 16, that's going to give me 25 sixths. Let's look at another example. Okay, how about this one? Three and a half minus two and five sixths. So these are mixed fractions. So the first thing we've got to do is convert them to improper form. So three and a half, we go three times two is six, six plus one is seven. So three and one half is this equivalent to seven halves. Take away. And we've got 2 and 5 sixths, so 6 times 2 is 12, 12 plus 5 is 17 sixths. So if we had two whole things and 5 sixths, that's the same thing as saying we've got 17 sixths. And looking at our denominators here, we can see unfortunately that they are not the same. Um, so can we find a number that we can divide these both by? The smallest one we can divide them both by is actually 6. So you can see this first one, if all I did was multiply the 2 by a 3, 
I get that to 6. Multiply the top, the numerator, by 3 as well. I get 21. And now my denominators are the same. I didn't have to do anything to the second fraction um, because it's now got the same denominator as the first fraction here. So 21 sixths minus 17 sixths is equivalent to 4 sixths. Now we would be correct in saying the answer is 4 sixths. However, uh, when we're doing any work um, with fractions, we want to make sure that our answer is in lowest terms. And so when we look at this number 4 and 6, we can see that we can actually divide these both by 2 because um, they're both even numbers. So if I divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So instead of saying, if I had 3 and a half pies and I, I ate or I took away 2 and 5, 6 pies, I'm left with 4 sixths of a pie. It's just tidier to say I'm left with 2 thirds of a pie because it's in lowest, lowest terms. So um, when you get your final answer, just after you've done all your adding or subtracting, just check and make sure, is it in lowest terms? If they're both even numbers, that means you can always divide them by 2. In this case, these were both even numbers, so I divide them by 2 and I got 2 thirds. Now, 2 and 3 cannot be reduced any further, so this is my final answer. So let's review how we would add or subtract fractions. So to add or subtract fractions, the first thing we want to make sure is that all of the fractions are in improper form. So these two here are not. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So 1 and a half will become 3 over 2. And 1 and 1 sixth, 6 times 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, would be 7 6. So make sure all the fractions are in improper form. Make sure your fractions now have a common denominator. These ones don't, but if I multiplied the numerator and denominator of this one by 3, this would become 9 over 6 plus 7 over 6. So now they have a common denominator. So once we've got the common denominators, now we can add or subtract. If it was a subtracting question, we could add or subtract the numerators. But leave the denominators alone. Do not add or subtract the denominators. So if I've got 9 sixths plus 7 sixths, now I've got 16 sixths. 9 plus 7 is 16. Leave the denominators alone. And then finally, if necessary, uh, you reduce your final answer if required. So looking at this one here, these actually are both even numbers, so I could divide them both by 2. Dividing 16 by 2, I get 8. Dividing 6 by 2, I get 3. And so there's my final answer, 8 thirds. So that's how you can add or subtract fractions.